It's my pleasure this morning uh, to welcome Phil Carlino of Form Labs. And uh, Phil, uh, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate you taking some time to be part of this. So welcome to the webinar. Thank you. I'm uh, very excited. Uh, I've been sleepless the entire weekend. Uh, so excited <laughs> this morning. So I uh, very appreciate all who are joining and uh, very much looking forward to our chat. Uh, well, I mean, as a starting point, I wanted to do just a quick survey here to see who's joining us. Are you a dentist, a lab, or a, a supplier? So we have an idea of who's on right now. And I know a lot of people are just signing up. So if you don't mind uh, letting us know. And then as a starting point, Phil, I mean, my first question is how the heck did you end up in dental? Mm. I think most people ask themselves that question, no matter where you go, <laughs> lab, dentist, or manufacturer. Uh, well, typically you get a lot of dentists that, uh, that it becomes as a family business, but and that actually has the same uh, history with myself. So I'm actually third generation dental manufacturer. Um, it is uh, not something that usually when I tell people that, uh, they think that I'm actually kidding. Uh, but uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, to be to grow up in this business. Um, actually, both sets of my grandparents, my, my parents, uh, my, my father, Barry uh, Carlino, worked for Dent Supply for 30 years uh, and retired from there, uh, in, from Milford, Delaware. Uh, and uh, my other side of my family worked in the York Dent Supply office, and my parents actually met through Dent Supply. So, uh, jokingly, I am a byproduct um, of the dental industry. So, uh, even though while I was in college, I swore that I would never do it. And everybody just smirked and said, sure, you're not going to enter the dental business. Uh, and then in 2001, uh, when uh, I was selling treadmills uh, in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, uh, and really unsure what was next, my father rang me up and he said, there's a great opportunity at Dent Supply. Uh, I know somebody there. So uh, I took that as an opportunity and uh, worked my way th uh, through a number of different roles. But uh, it's we're very just so fortunate to have found this industry in this space um and how unique and how fast it's growing so um you know just to see technology advance in the 20 years that i've uh been in dentistry uh and to see how it's just benefited both um both business owners both patient uh, it's exciting uh what's next so I mean, you've worked for some interesting uh, technology-driven dental companies. I mean, aside from Dent Supply, you've been at Align and, and uh, you know, Horaeus and now Formlab. So, uh, I mean, that's a wealth of experience to bring to the table. I've got the scars to prove it. People think that uh, they joke and they're like, I, in, I was very fortunate to join um, Align Technology in 2006. Um, I had the, uh, the the New York City, the Manhattan uh, territory, which it was amazing. <laughs> I I was 26 years old. Um, I jokingly would have my shoes were my tires, so I'd have to get them rotated out very often. And and uh, I I remember specifically of actually uh, it was back in the days when we all still wore suits. So apologize for my. Uh, they call this COVID business casual dressing, but I would carry around a tackle box of um, auxiliary appliances in the subway, a, a true tackle box, like a fishing tackle box around Manhattan, visiting offices because the liners weren't as good as they are now. So, uh, you know, people were like, that was great. You got in early. You're like, yeah, but you know what? It was so much work. It was so rewarding. Uh, because you saw it evolve, and um, you know, you see you then going with companies like Colzer, who've seen, who have, who have, you see them in, you know, taking on that next technology, taking on, you know, I was there when uh, the uh was purchased by Align, uh, and you see uh, 3D printing now, and we see uh, with Form Labs uh, building a 3D or a, a dental team. So it is, it has pushed me to grow, and I think that's something that we all, uh, we all want to do. It sounds great. Is uh, I always say is like. I, I'm very un, I'm very comfortable being uncomfortable, um, and it's a weird place to be in. Uh, kind of looking down a barrel, like I have no <laughs> idea what I'm doing, but okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's 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 awesome. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a gift to be uncomfortable when you're, uh, or, or comfortable when things are uncomfortable, right? They, mm -hmm. You know, it's part of the evolving 
technology world, but it's also a lot of people are not comfortable in those environments. So good for you. I mean, I, I wanted to ask, what's a, can you brief us on the story of Form Labs and, you know, kind of how did this company get started just so everyone here gets to know? It is a it is a, a pretty exciting, a pretty cool story. So if you have uh, Netflix, which I think at this point everybody in North America probably does, they did a Netflix documentary on uh, uh, Formlabs and a few other about the evolution of 3D printing in, in desktop, and it's called Print the Legend. So if you want to go see some of our founders, now some of them feel like they look a little young and immature, which is true, but that's where they were at this time. Um, so we were found in the MIT Media Lab um, and our, uh, one of our co-founders, Max Lasky, who is uh, our today, they, they, they enjoyed working with 3D printers, especially SLA printers, uh, but they were uh, just so far out of reach when they were looking to graduate, they felt as though they could uh, to, to reinvent this and do this where it's very affordable for everybody. So uh, through a Kickstarter campaign, they raised uh, a good amount of funding, and that launched the, the business in 2012. Um, since then, uh, Form Labs has uh, grown tremendously. Uh, we're based uh, here in, uh, in Boston or in Cambridge, even though I have a Philadelphia sign behind me as I say that. Uh, we are in the, the Boston area, so we have uh, the talent that we have from um, from institutions like MIT um, and like Harvard and a lot of other incredible uh, education. Like we just have a wealth of knowledge um, and uh, skill set in this market, which is which is awesome. Um, it, so that launched uh, the Form One, uh, a, a few versions. Uh, the Form One Plus came out, which uh, some in, in dentistry dabbled. It was a very affordable printer, but it wasn't until the Form Two uh, launched for uh, the company in 2014 that this all really exploded. and. Um, Dentistry found Form Labs. So to kind of tie it into uh, how Form Labs became a part of the, the dental uh, ecosystem here, as with within just a short three years, uh, Form Labs became the number one used uh, 3D printer in uh, in dentistry. Uh, the NADL decently did studies that over 30% of dental labs that 3D print um, are using Form Labs products. So uh, it's not always obviously exclusive to one printer company because there's so many different types of technologies that you can really um, you could utilize for different applications. But Formas has uh, really helped driven the affordability piece of uh, 3D printing. And so we are now um, in six countries. We have over 600 employees. Uh, we have over 400 engineers and material scientists. So the, the, the thing that people oftentimes don't realize is that we design, we manufacture, uh, we build the whole unit from the ground up. Um, many companies bring in parts and projectors and, um, and, and really helps them uh, it, you know, come out with new technologies a little bit faster sometimes. But we, everything from our gallows to our lasers, we design and manufacture all of them ourselves. So that is a, that's a really unique feature to, uh, to, to Form Labs. And um, at this point, we, uh, in August of 2018, uh, Form Labs uh, officially became a unicorn, uh, where we have a valuation of over a, a billion dollars. Uh, we we um, added Jeff Amelt to our board, uh, which uh, really gave us a, a huge wealth of knowledge and experience. So um, we've got a lot of folks that are really um, interested in, in that already there and helping us be successful um, in and that's on the printing side. And the one part of the, the, the part of it that the resin side is a lot of times where people don't talk to you. You look at the printer and obviously that's what's producing the part. It's the bigger one. It's the bigger cost. Uh, but Formlabs also acquired uh, Spectra, which is our, uh, our resin manufacturing facility. So uh, we make all of our own resins. Uh, we have a uh, FDA registered uh, class, uh, so class eight uh, clean room for all our biocompatible materials. Um, so what that allowed us to do was during you know, swap production with COVID, because we had this certification as a dental manufacturer or as a manu FDA uh, certified manufacturer, we were able to pivot very quickly. We were able to produce uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of parts um, and print a lot of things. So we also were able to keep our supply uh, locally. So while they were having, you know, getting shipping uh, supplies to, to Asia and, and a lot of other markets we had difficulty. We had all of our supply domestic and we had some of our, our largest customers actually drive trucks over to our facility um, in Ohio uh, to pick up the resin in barrels. So uh, it's kind of cool to see how Formlabs has evolved as a company 
um, it, uh, you know, globally with all of our uh, with all of our business unit, but then uh, in 20, last year, just about a year ago, uh, November 12th of 2019, uh, we launched our Form Labs Dental brand, our team, and our own dental division. Uh, that dental division now consists of over 32 dental professionals. Uh, we have staff doctors, CDTs, professionals, uh, sales uh, folks that are all they do is dental. So that has really give us a really laser focus on growing uh, the business, the dental business of Form Labs uh, as we move forward. So that might have been a really long answer to it, but I think I cut out a lot of stuff that was maybe a little boring, but there you go. Well, I, I appreciate the, us uh, or you getting the, the audience warmed up to Form Labs. And uh, as a first poll, I wanted to know uh, how many people here have Form Labs printers and uh, how many people don't. And uh, there's a question here already, which is, uh, is chairside printing uh, right now, should I start looking for another job? Or I guess it's chairside printing here and uh, must be coming from one of our, our uh, lab viewers, you know, should they start looking for another job? And by the way, how many Form Labs printers are out in the market, Bill? Uh, so uh, we've sold somewhere in the range of uh, 65 to 75,000 uh, Form Labs printers within eight years. Um, and they are, uh, and those are all just the desktop versions. And as we launch, which we'll get into in a little bit, uh, new newer printers for different indications, we see that expanding uh, tremendously. So right now we know that more parts are printed off Form Labs printers than any other printer because we have the most of them that are out there actually working in the market. Um, so that is, um, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting the opportunities. Oftentimes what you'll see is as, as people scale, uh, they might have an increase in demand by like 10% or 15%. And it's really hard to justify a 30 or $40,000 investment. But for an additional 3,500 or $4,000, you can scale very quickly, especially when you're adding different applications. So you can have a dedicated printer to each application, even though they're easily interchangeable, it gives a lot of flexibility as, as, as customers are really, are really growing. Um, so, I mean, let's touch on that. Uh, and, uh, you know, the first question is, you know, are lab guys going to be unemployed because of chair side printing? And, uh, I've got some comments on that because we design for dentists and labs. So we do digital designs for people around the world. And you see patterns of uh, what works and what doesn't work just because of the, you know, the, the volume and, and the breadth of who we work with in the industry. And so I'd love to hear your, your uh, you know, opinions on that. And then uh, I can jump in and give you my feedback. So that is, you might as well start off with a scary first question. Uh, so the simple answer is, is no. Uh, and I think anybody that really understands uh, the marketing and, and how this, this, this technology is a full system, how it works from the design side, from where you guys come in, from the print side to the post-processing side, um, the threat isn't there. And uh, oftentimes new technologies are, are the fear part of it um, is really put in, but um, I say this is the the best opportunity for uh, at the end of the day when you see this technology is to to look at one's business and say, okay, w how can I approach my how, the market differently? If if I feel as though this is a threat, maybe there's an opportunity somewhere. Um, there's an opportunity whether it be uh, how you connect with your customer, how close you are to your customers. Um, so a lot of times, historically, dental manufacturers were so far away from their end user that they really didn't give feedback and it would it cause them to act very slowly. But as you get close to your customers and you can ask the different questions and you know people are making decisions or inquiring about growing, understanding how your customers and why they're growing. Um, you know, if, if it's, a, it's a lab working with a dentist and they are interested in, in 3D printing, the, the, you know, I would look at is what are some of the things that are driving that behavior? Uh, you know, if I look at the easy ones is, is increasing ROI. Um, you know, as the cost of technologies uh, and other costs are really putting pressure of, of DSOs, uh, potentially having a downward pressure on the profitability of it, that could be one of the, the biggest variables. 
a lot of it too is is having uh, more instant um, uh, production opportunity. So people want things immediately. Uh, I think we've all seen through this COVID that uh, if you can't have, what is it, Amazon Prime automatic, like things delivered, you can't get your dish towels in like 45 minutes, then you consider it slower. A lot of times people now when it comes to printing and production is if you want that restoration with that immediate gratification it's because customers, especially the younger, uh, the millennial type of customers, they expect to have these things turned around or you go to one line or they say, hey, you got to wait a month to start in this line. That's not acceptable for them. I laid down my money yesterday or today. I want to start tomorrow. So having that closer to demand is, is really driving some of the behaviors um, for people. So, I mean, if, if the customers or if those customers, if you feel as though they're having threat is, I think the, the real question is, is what's creating, uh, what's driving them to look for these type of technologies to really change the way that their business is evolving. And then to be able to look at that and say, Hey, how can that uh, benefit my, my business as well? Yeah. Then, uh, I mean, from, from my standpoint, like uh, I mentioned to you earlier, Phil, we deal with, hundreds of uh, dentists that design and want to print in their in their uh, own practices and i have to say from a support perspective they probably need more hand holding than anyone else right and it it uh, comes for two reasons i mean number one you know if you have a change of staff then suddenly the process has changed and uh, then they've got to train someone else to, to use the equipment. The second is a lot of them don't use the printer often enough to get good at it. And so I would assume a lot of the printers sitting in dental offices, a good chunk of them probably are not used every day, you know? And so, sorry, go ahead. 100% agree. And uh, as a as a resin manufacturer, that that just makes me weep a little bit. Uh, we we want those <laughs> things to be running every single day. But uh, you also got to look at is okay. You train somebody, you put the investment, and now they have that certificate, right? Uh, but we know that em the employees are changing. So what used to be somebody that ran a lab because their their father ran a lab or somebody that did that had the small mom and pop shop, that workforce isn't there anymore. They want to do CAD design. They want to do something else. They don't want to put their hands. They don't want to get the dust. So the whole labor market is changing, not just changing what you have in the lab or what you have in the practice, but the type of, the type of employee that you're going to be able to attract as you move forward, you have to evolve that uh, type of, you have to evolve the roles that you're able to do to produce to, to stay competitive. Uh, because otherwise, I mean, look where dentures are going. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's been, Everybody's waiting for this BCG change to like 3D printed dressers. Now it's growing. Everybody's aware of it, but we know that then, you know, a lot of times the creation of the dentures is such a manual labor intensive process. That is a, uh, it's, it's an art. We all know that it's, it is an art on characterization and how you produce it and all those things, but it's a difficult one to learn. And it's, it's hard finding people that are going to do those types of roles moving forward, but technology yeah. can advance that. Well, it's kind of like uh, Southwest Airlines. You know, when when Southwest Airlines opened up, all the airline companies said, oh, we're going to go broke because here's this low-cost carrier and, you know, uh, blah, 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 you know the story. And uh, the reality is Southwest, their target was to take people who would have driven six to eight hours. And they said, let's expand the market and give people who would have otherwise driven a chance to to fly and be more efficient with their time you know and that's how they grew the overall airline market i do think 3d printing has the same opportunity you know there is a use for chair side 3d printing in dental clinics right? especially when it comes to printing things like uh, uh, diagnostic mock-ups or instead of doing a diagnostic wax up, you can print it. And as long as you've got white resin, it looks good. I mean, we do that a lot for, for dentists. Also, if you're trying to, to uh, you know, sell a case and you need someone to walk out of there with something, then uh, you can 3D print it. Temporaries, you can 3D print, you know? 
I think the challenge dentists have is they dabble. And what we've seen is you've got dabblers and you've got people that actually commit to the one thing to, to jump into 3D printing uh, as part of their practice. And if you're going to jump into it, it requires an investment, not only in the 3D printing equipment, but also in training and development and partnering up with guys like us to, to actually help you build that out. And if you're dabbling, you know, I can tell you 75% of the time it doesn't work, right? Because you, you know, software gets upgraded, materials change, calibration of the equipment. I think where the labs play a role is some sort of distributed network where, you know, people who want to dabble in 3D printing can partner up with a laboratory and come up with some sort of arrangement where their local lab actually takes care of the 3D printer problem or for them so that uh, it becomes a useful tool in the dental practice without the headache of trying to maintain and service these things. That's my two bits, Bill. And I don't know if you think I'm on the right track or not. <laughs> no, it, it is a it's a it's a crawl walk run. You you can't start off from the day one and start printing end restorations. And I, I think your Southwest Airline example is, is great. And I think I would parallel that to the ability to have indirect versus direct um, applications. So while a lot of times a patient may not accept a treatment for a direct uh, application because the cost was higher, but even though the clinical outcome would have benefited an inlay versus a, a placed composite, we know that if you can be you can be more competitive, if you provide a better quality product for them, it's something that maybe lasts longer. So there's actual clinical benefit. There's actually a, a functional benefit for them. Then they will they'll take these types of indirect restorations that can also yield a greater ROI for the actual clinician themselves. So those where I see that that high tide raises all shipping. And to your point is you, you, you still have to partner with a, a lab. And I go, I'll go back to my Invisalign days. Um, those orthodontic practices that saw general practitioners as pariahs lost in the end. Those orthodontic practices that saw them and took them under their wing and became a trusted advisor. Like that's you, somebody you can go to they got all the referrals, they got their business, they got the relationship. So if you think that you're gonna slow this down, you're gonna get run over. Uh, but instead it's like, how do I get closer to that customer? How do I change and evolve my business to say, hey, we, we, we're gonna to grow together. Um, that's, that's where you're gonna have success at the end. Yeah, and, and uh, as we go through the webinar, I'm gonna to touch on some of the things we're doing to, to help labs reinvent their business model. And uh, uh, I just wanted to, uh, hit a couple of the questions that are uh, on my board now. Uh, what can labs do to stay ahead of chairside printing? Let's let's leave that later on to answer. So I just wanted to bring that up so you don't feel like uh, we're ignoring you. And then uh, here's a guy saying, is there going to be useful information at this meeting on chairside printing other than introductory chatting? So I wrote down, you're just rude, man. <laughs> you know, life's too short. Uh, where do you see chairside printing in the future? So, well, to the other gentleman, if, if we don't cover specifics and you'd like to send me an email, I'll give you all the stats in the white papers at philphl at formlabs.com. Getting technical on a chat, I think, is 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 difficult. So we will, I'll, I'll throw that out there if we don't feel like we we supported those that like the, the hard facts. Uh, but if you say where are we going to go in the future, um, I think that you're going to see uh, a lot of the, both the printing and the actual materials are going to need to evolve to simplify the process. So the idea that you're going to be able to do a a, a print uh, in, in a direct placement without any work is still far-fetched idea because we know that there still is the actually obviously the internal scan the design side of it that has to happen uh the printing and then the post-processing and the post-processing can take up to 30 or 45 minutes and that's one piece of the equation that almost always gets overlooked it takes far longer to post-process most of these 
um, in the enteral application to be able to check all the boxes for it to be an FDA certified class one or class two material. And that whole workflow is going to just going to continue to shrink. It's going to continue to improve. Uh, the, the resins that are actually going to continue to have better physical properties, they're, they're, the, the physical properties that they have are completely uh, adequate to what we need for them at the space, but they're going to continue to improve. But the the skill set that's going to be required will continue to change. And with that, um, it, it's not going to be probably not going to be done with the printers that we're using today. You're going to have to introduce, I mean, you've got DLP, you've got LCD, you've got uh, SLA. I mean, it, besides that, really nothing else is producing biocompatible parts in the dental space. So for us to move to something that's going to move move through patients faster, that's going to give more on-demand, it's you're going to see an evolution, a different type of section allergies. I wish I knew what they were right now, uh, but you're not, uh, we don't have that, that, um, that crystal ball right now, but those are the types of things that you're really going to want to watch uh, to really grow. So uh, what I'm hearing from you is right now, printing technology, if you start from, you know, scan to design to uh, 3D printing a product to post-processing, how long does that typically take right now? You know, probably a couple of hours at least by the time the whole process is done. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's that. Um, that's where you take away if the the patient is what do you call it chair side? Do you call it same day? Uh, you know, do you have a, a somebody if it is a clinical practice and you have a lab technician that's doing everything, or you, is it a team member that's grabbing this in between patients? That changes the entire workflow for for everything and the time that it takes. So while a lot of it is getting uh, is more automated, it's still isn't it's still lots of lots of manual touches to move it through the process so yeah i mean if you're doing your own design um and if you're if you're you know going along the process and you don't stop anywhere for an hour and a half uh but that's more uh unlikely um than it is so you're looking at a two two and a half hour process uh because most people are you know going to be doing outsourced design um we that's what we generally recommend uh because if, if you purchase the software where there's obviously some some fantastic softwares out there. Uh, if you're new into this, it really kind of blows a hole in the ROI. It's hard to to really make yeah. the financial cost and say, hey, I'm gonna buy a seven thousand dollar software with a ten thousand dollar you know printer package plus the resin plus the labor to do X amount of crowns. You gotta look at the math and you're like, unless you're a full production facility, which then you're like, okay, that makes sense. I can do that. But you're talking about chair side, which you know we're focused on. Is it's it's really hard to make that use case when you're uh, when that uh, purchasing of that software piece is really taken into consideration. Yeah, yeah, and and I think uh, what I'm hearing from you, which I fully agree with right now, is chair chair side printing. People think, oh, while the patient's on the chair, we're going to print something out, and within the hour appointment they'll be gone. That's a bit of a ways. You know, if you're talking about in-house printing in your dental practice and creating your own laboratory, that's a different type of option. Would you agree? Yes, 100%. And companies and partnerships like even in, in, in Form Labs will shrink that time. So obviously, we have an ability to, uh, if, to receive files and, and print remotely. So uh, the customer sends over the design uh, to event. You then turn around and you send it directly to the printer, and that printer automatically starts. So there's not a delay. There's not a having somebody to grab the file, to drag it over to the printer, to push start. You start that remotely. So that can, those types of automations will will, will help, but it's it's not going to solve it. It's not going to make it an instant. If you need instant, you're still going to be doing direct, you know, restorations uh, with composite fillings and all those types of things, which is a more manual process, but you know that it's, 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 it's obviously going to be faster. So it's, it's a little bit different, but the, again, we go, we go back to it is the benefit that you have for indirect applications for inlays, onlays, and crowns at a low cost, you know, it, it, it's going to evolve and the materials are going to evolve, uh, but the workflow is not at that point where it's going to be instant gratification, like everybody expects or wants. I can't yeah, tell you how many... I'm uh, very large groups I've, I've pitched it to and they're like, are you talking us out of this? I'm like, no, we're just being honest because at the end of the day, yeah. uh, I mean, everybody's like, oh, I can print a crown for two. 
Uh, I think we lost your audio, Phil. Oh, sorry. Am I good? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you were saying you can print the crown and then we kind of lost you. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it was. Apologize for that. It's saying you, you could print the crown, but when you when you take a look at the whole, everybody wants this to be done automatic, simple, fast. But that's not the reality of it. If that was the reality of it, the entire business would be turned upside on it on its head. And we're we're far from that. There's going to be a lot of steps that are going to happen before that before that ever takes hold. Okay. Well, I I think you've just made a lot of lab uh, listeners happy and probably save the, uh, a lot of the dentists uh, the time and frustration of uh, trying to, to do something chair-side when the reality is it's all about creating, if you wanted to, either an in-house lab or some sort of backup device in case the logistics of, of life in general uh, get stuck, especially with this new COVID world, you know? Uh, so, uh, questions that I've got on my list. What about resins? You know, and uh, I'm uh, looking at this question going, uh, uh, gosh, let me just read this. My eyes are bad. Like, where do you think resins are going to be going? And is there such a thing as, you know, Zirconia, metal, ceramic, or composite material that uh, can be three D printed. Not with the technology that's currently available. Uh, so you know that's the the fear is that uh, or the, the that printing is going to replace milling. That's not going to happen. Three <laughs> D printing is a replace milling. Uh, they are complementary to one another. Uh, where you know I say is three D printing a surgical guide makes a heck of a lot more sense than, than printing one because of the mess, the cleanup, the, the waste, all of those things. It's a disposable product. Like, so that to me always historically made more sense to be able to utilize a 3D printer for that type of thing. If you're talking about those types of materials, um, there's, they're, they're far from uh, those. It's going to be different. And the, the, the resin companies and the technologies and a lot of people that are getting into this game, um, a lot of traditional dental companies that didn't originally get in on the, on the printer side, we see wanting to get in on the resin side, on the consumable side, which it's a smart play. Uh, so I think that you're going to see the evolution of these resins start moving fast. Uh, one of the biggest ones, every, everybody generally asks whether it's a, uh, it's a lab show or an ortho show or GP show is direct printed aligners. And that's, in a sense, for a lot of people, the holy grail. But just like when you talk about the crown, when you talk about the aligner, it's about the total workflow. Isn't doesn't actually make a whole lot of sense. But also the physical properties of the part that's created off a printer doesn't have the, the what's necessary for tooth movement. It, it, it's their, their materials are rigid. They they sh they don't have that same type of force structure that you get with a thermoform plastic. So you know, like if thermoform materials aren't going anywhere, uh, blocks aren't going anywhere, mills aren't going anywhere. So this this fear that three D printing is going to upend uh, the industry, it's really unfounded. It's just it's just an uh, it's it's just the new thing. Um, you know, you could call scanners a few years ago. Uh, you know, a few years ago said, oh, it's the end of impression material. Uh, we saw how long scanners took to adopt okay. into the market i mean i think they're what like 20 25 percent of COVID is really helping but the biggest barriers w were cost uh training and people like where's the real benefit now they're starting to see the benefit turnaround time patient experience patients are demanding it but besides that i mean and then the same thing with uh with in-office milling is that i mean sarah blew you know the whole thing open uh 25 30 years ago um phenomenal product i mean they have some of the best educators and you know like sarah docs and all those folks that are i mean it and it it still didn't change it, don't be wrong it changed the market in, in a way but there's still so many barriers to entry around training around cost of equipment around maintenance and all those folks that a lot of people like yeah it's not really it's not really there so you know a lot of people were afraid of it but it didn't change the way that they functionally do business. And a lot of folks saw that as doing it like an in-lab is that you opened up a new business opportunity for this specific group. 
and about outside of the CEREC, there's still a lot of uh, production opportunity uh, when you're partnered up with those folks. Yeah, and uh, again, uh, I think we're on the same page uh, with this as well, Phil. What we see the world, let's take a look at, uh, just to answer people who are asking a bunch of questions regarding how we see the future of labs. You know, what we see is the support burden, and I mean that in the best of ways, supporting dentists on technology is a big job. Uh, and it's because dentists and, and their teams are worried about the patient, you know, and setting up a manufacturing facility. I mean, uh, all you lab guys know, manufacturing facilities are hard too. And you're already stretched uh, to take care of your patients, take care of COVID, take care of sales, production as a dentist, that people who set up and try and set up their own manufacturing facilities, unless they're doing it at a certain scale, uh, require a lot of handholding. And they usually do it on occasion that they need something in a rush or, or uh, maybe they pick two or three products that they want to start doing in-house. And that's great. I think where the opportunity is for labs is to be that partner of a clinic from iOS to printing, right? And in fact, uh, as an example, you know, we've been approached by a number of iOS companies uh, to, to help them really promote and, and introduce their products to the marketplace. And we're doing one now with 3Disc and we have a number of other companies that uh, we're going to be announcing soon where we said, okay, use scanner guys, printer guys, you guys want to introduce your products to uh, the dental world. Here we are, we design, we see the, the output for, it gives us a lot of headaches. So we want to make sure that the output's good uh, from a design standpoint or from a digital file standpoint so that it can be printed, milled, or it can go to the lab properly. And so what we did was we, as a pilot project, we went to a whole bunch of customers of Evident, the guys that were sending us designs, and we said to them, okay, lab guys, here's the deal. We've got all these dentists looking for scanners. We'll partner with the scanner company to bring uh, scanners to them and help them learn how to use those scanners. If you're a lab, would you like to get digital customers and you know you help train them and uh, uh, we'll send the customers your way. And we've created that marriage where uh, we just launched it this week. You know, anyone who gets a three disc scanner, and I think it's about $18,000. I, I may be off by 500 bucks. You get the, uh, $15,000 in lab credits, and it's from labs that want to teach these dentists how to use them, whether it's print or mill. And uh, we're working with form labs to integrate the designs to their form labs printers as well, so we can train on scan, train on print, and then uh, for the most part, partner with a laboratory to send the work there. And it makes everyone happy, and it teaches the world to digitize properly. And so that's what we're hoping to do. And fingers crossed, hope it works. So uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you with a the commercial there, Phil, but I'm just trying to explain them to lab people. There's more complexity to this than, you know, just buying a printer. You're, as you said before, you're looking at your business and you're changing it. You're evolving, you're quickly, you're moving, you're adjusting. And that's where we see these new technologies that are coming out, these new resins and these new printers. It's not so much how this is going to come out, is this going to affect me? You're taking it as an approach of a growth uh, tool. Say, hey, I'm going to grab a hold of this, you know, these intro scanners that have come down so in price that are so much easier to use, that you can get up and running so much faster. You can set up and an hour um, and you can receive both on the same day and still actually produce something the same day. But like, you know, that's, you know, five, 10 years ago, that would take you yeah, months. It would take you yeah. teams. Now uh, you, you, you know, with in the, in the world that we are and you, you, you know, for us, 
we we've thrived in, you know, this hopefully comes out right we've done very well this year uh in growth because we were able to deliver a solution that was fast it was scalable didn't need uh, a manual install there's not a lot of uh you know hand holding or any hand holding that's really evolved so we were able to continue to grow our business um and those reasons yeah it, it's been an interesting experience for us still so uh, I'm very grateful for you and Farm Labs for shipping us a, a Farm Labs printer. And in the next few days, we're actually going to unbox it and uh, share it on social how long it takes us to unbox, set it up, and get it going. And we're, we're super excited to do that. So thanks for sending us a printer, Phil. You're like a Mac Daddy just saying, hey, you guys see for yourself and try it out. And the, the, some of the scanner companies have been sending us scanners to try out. The, our first one, as I mentioned, is uh, three disc and their hair on scanner. And I have to tell you, uh, Maria from the Evident team filmed it, an unboxing from the time uh, she opened the package to her first scan, never having used it before. She was scanning in under 19 minutes. And I mean, to me, those are big changes i mean i was telling you the first 3d printer we got phil it took us almost four months to get it up and running you know and now the form labs printer i mean they ship it to you you turn it on you set it up and off you go it's like to me it, those it, are the key changes in the world you know you probably had a fifteen thousand dollar annual service on that that they probably didn't so you probably paid like five grand and it's not there for you so my challenge to you is i have a seven-year-old that could put together the printer and actually start printing in about a half an hour 45 minutes so if you guys it'll be one of those can you be a second grader that'll be your contest so your benchmark <laughs> is an hour if you can't do it an hour just think my second grader maybe smarter i don't really know how to put it but he could uh, just the challenge is there I think you guys can do it. Uh, I think in trouble now because I don't think I could beat your son. <laughs> um, you know, and, and to me, uh, to all our viewers, to me, that's where the the changes are happening. You know, that uh, what I'm seeing is not that the products are printing better or the scanners are scanning better. What we're seeing is that the ease by which you can set this up they they're becoming more user friendly and then of course the the materials are evolving as well uh would you agree what yeah i do i, I one thing that um i think that the i want to call it the transparency or the due diligence of the manufacturers is going to be a real critical part as we move forward um, as we see these new applications and making sure that, that the companies don't try to move too fast and they dot their I's and they cross their T's. So let's bring it back to uh, the, the crown printed material is with Form Labs, we validated our new direct, uh, our, our, new, uh, our, our new crown material uh, for FDA compliance where we took it and we did a full uh, printer uh, or design print, uh, actually post-processing and validate as a class two material. We did the same thing with our splints. So when you're introducing a new technology knowing that it is a certified material certified with the cluster or with the fda it, it make sure that it has all of its um all of its strengths all of its wear all of the variables that are important to the longevity of the material and making sure that 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 testing is done it, it's critical where we see a, a lot of times folks were are launching resins without validation or launching resins on printers that haven't actually printed on the resin that they haven't printed on that printer so they're taking the uh the variables or the outputs off of another printer and they're saying well it's the same it really isn't the same you know i, I take a steak and i send it to two different restaurants it's going to come out a little bit different one if it's a chain or versus like a five-star restaurant they're going to handle that product differently even though it might source it at the beginning it is, is, is the same. So we know that there's going to be a, and, and the whole concern around aligners and 510K and what's needed. So that's gonna be uh, the, the next big thing that the manufacturers are gonna really have to own there is, are we covering and are we taking care of uh, both our 
our, our labs are the, the, the clinicians that are using the product and then the patients at the end of the day. And, and I'm very proud this, that Form Labs is, is making those investments. We've invested a huge amount um, in the validation of this permanent crown material and we do with all of our products. So all of our certifications are done. So it gives peace of mind. And also as coverage um, coming, you know, I've seen a, a lot of people get sued over the years for just good, you know, good treatment and for no reason, except for we sometimes are in a, a sue you culture. So having these types of insurances to cover yourself is going to be critically important um, as we move forward. So uh, we've got a few other questions here and uh, uh, this one's uh, nicely written out as a newbie. Uh, and not too bright. Uh, how do Form Labs printers compare to budget ones such as AnyCubic, etc.? And usually, people who say they're not too bright, they're usually awfully bright. So I appreciate the the modesty. <laughs> so um, there are, I've said this, there are so much room to grow for so many dental manufacturers. The last thing that I'm going to do is to disparage any any printer because I, I have respect for all uh, colleagues and, and 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 people that are in the industry. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of printers that are going to be coming out that are a thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars, and and the and the price tag is very attractive. Um, and what you're the biggest thing that you're going to see is consistency and and the accuracy of the part. So, um, and then and how they fit at the end of the day. So you can produce something in, let's say you want to produce a toy. Uh, if that car that comes out isn't exactly the way that it was in the CAD, you're never going to really know visually. But if that part isn't tra translated directly into that final product for a clinical indication, like a surgical guide, the fit and the precision that's required is, is incredible. Now, the one, one area that you get a little fudge is on the aligner side or on the retainer side because you're vacuum forming and then you kind of maybe mess around with it. So um, that at the end of the day, you're going to have, it's going to be a consistency thing. I can tell you uh, from having been at trade shows and, and talking to people for years, you talk about the printers that people will invest a little bit. Um, if you go with some that aren't really, I don't say validated or aren't trusted uh, that are, aren't really out there in the market, generally you'll go through those every two or three months. Um, and then eventually you're going to move into, uh, you know, a form labs type of a product because it's you generally it's frustration work occurs. So, you know, we have 35, um, uh, service, uh, support team people that you can call at any time that can get answers for you. Uh, we have full validation on all of our printers. So it's that kind of peace of mind. Um, and let's be honest, we're, we're at a price point of, uh, a four thousand dollar price point. So uh, all it takes to replace it one more one time and get a couple headaches, uh, and it really it's hard to justify um, a non dental printer when it comes to that. And there's there's a uh, a couple of questions here that tie into the same theme, which is uh, I know and we've chatted about this that Form Labs produces their own resins, and I think it's fair to say. Uh, Form Labs strategy is to have easy to use, low cost printers and then make money on the resins and, you know, sort of the razor blade versus razor, right? And uh, it's a very fair approach. And not only that, uh, it makes sure the quality is good. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> it, now we're evolving. So this is a build platform off of our new, our new Form 3BL. Um, so we can print uh, vertically over 50 models. There's 24 models printed here horizontally. So uh, uh, we are moving into um, higher production. So it always has been, you can scale up uh, them. It um, starts in the range of $10,000. So it's still very affordable, uh, being able to do a, a wide range of applications, but to be able to move for production customers into a new segment is where we're going. Uh, we're also very uh, excited with our the other product that we're launching, which is an SLS printer uh, for direct printed nylon, which we think is going to have a, a real opportunity and impact um, in the sleep market uh, for direct printed sleep appliances, uh, which will be out uh, in, in, in a few months. We're already shipping for other industries. And as we're adding new, uh, in that sense, it's actually powders. So that's the type of technology that we're saying that is uh, the affordability of that type of a, a printer and we're we're introducing two pieces of hardware plus is the resin 
uh, plus a lot of these different applications, we're going to see that the Form Labs portfolio and brand uh, really continue to uh, to expand um, as we move forward. Thanks, yeah. Bill. And and I think that's a, that's a use, I got to use my the, prop. The, I, I got it out of the room <laughs> just for this. Thank you for uh, encouraging me to use my prop. No, I mean, uh, I think you're bang on, though. As the industry changes and technology changes, and, and this is a message I want to send to everyone, is just understand what you're, you know, a, a long time ago in, in dentistry, if we bought something, you could use it for the next 25 years until you retire. With technology, I, I mean, lifespan's about three years and then you're upgrading or, or something new comes out. So just factor that in when you, when you uh, invest capital is that everything, you know, the lifespan's about three to four years, four years max, and then you're looking at an upgrade of some sort, you know. And uh, uh, where I think Form Labs does a really great job. I mean, number one, we've talked a lot of printer companies. You guys are very responsive and you function like a tech company, you know? And when we talked about how do we integrate uh, evident to uh, your platform so that we can make it easier for dentists to design and for labs to design as you launch the, the larger printers. I mean, that conversation took a week from first conversation to let's get working on it. Let's put our technology teams together. We have companies that we've been speaking with for a year and they haven't figured out how to start this out, you know? And so to me, that tells me, okay, Form Labs is going to evolve with time. It's just, they react quickly. And so as the market changes, they're going to change with it. And, uh, you know, the second is, uh, the aggressiveness by which you guys try and service the customer. You know, I've been very impressed, the support, everything. I mean, and I, I keep telling people this, whether it's an intraoral scanner or designs or 3D printing, the support side probably matters more than anything else. I, we know, I mean, we have an entire support team to support dentists. And I know I've got a question here, uh, you know, uh, send an I, a dentist asking how they send an IO file to evident uh, in order to design for a printer they have set up. And, uh, you know, if you send us a message directly, we can help you set that up uh, for the, the dentist that's asking information. But, you know, the, the way we approach things at evident for the dentist market, we have a, a within one hour response time because we know they're waiting for things and we know that uh, the dentist will likely have a patient or, or some issue that, that uh, they need to solve. And for labs, they're the other way around. You know, they like batch loading at night and then they like the designs to be ready when they come in in the morning. And we also see where the dentists are successful printing and where the labs are successful printing. So it's hard for me to explain this to our lab customers, but I don't see chairside 3D printing taking over the lab business. What I see is chairside 3D printing being an addition where a lab a dentist, a design center like us can collaborate to help patients and, and provide be better patient care. And sure, there are products that are better suited printing in the office, but there's also a lot of things that I suggest dentists stay away from. And you guys can reach out to me and I can tell you which ones those are. So uh, it just saves everyone the headache of worrying about the future of the lab business. Um, from my standpoint, Phil, I'm, I'm, I've been very grateful and impressed with the people I've dealt with at Form Labs. You know, for people that are considering buying 3D printers now, uh, why do you think they should choose Form Labs in kind of a, you know, an elevator pitch? Uh, I do that all the time, so you're not putting me <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> So uh, your your big things, which is ease of use, we, we talked about it, the quick installation, the availability, like 
if somebody out there says, hey, Phil, I want a printer. This was this talk was so moving uh, that I want to have a printer and start printing by Thursday. I can have a printer to you installed anywhere in North America by Thursday, uh, shipped two days and it's there for you. So availability, ease of install. Um, our service team is, I believe, the, the best in the industry. Uh, they are an incredible group of, of trainers, um, service. We answer the phone at 98% rate. Um, now, if you had dealt with us three years ago, everything was, oh, was done by email. We had to evolve our business. We changed the way that we supported the customer. Uh, you know, you said it's a lab has a different demand than, than, than a general dentist. And general businesses have different demands than orthodontists. So we, we have evolved each of those type of specialties and we support them differently. Um, affordability um, is, is, is a huge piece of it, but it, it affordably wouldn't matter if the product that we produced didn't come out and be accurate. And if it wasn't, uh, doesn't fit well, that didn't provide uh, a product that uh, as a lab owner would feel confident and comfortable and proud to be able to deliver to their end user because it's, you know, whether your business as a lab owner is dependent, it's your reputation in the same way that re reputation of a dentist to the, to the, to the, to the patient is the critical part of their business. So we know that we support each uh, part along the way and, and we provide a great, uh, uh, a great value uh, to each, each one of those stakeholders along the way. Um, and we would support, any of those folks that came about. We also have an incredible uh, group of, of partners that we work with. Uh, you know, folks like yourself who help us on the design side. Companies like Henry Shine or Nowak, um, you know, Benko. Uh, they are they're they're our feet on the streets, and, and uh, there's there's uh, others, but those folks give us feedback. They're in with the uh, they're in with their customers. They're a lot of times our our front. Um, our front line. So we we work with all of those folks that we have our partnerships with uh, end up making us a better company. And uh, I mean, this is the fascinating thing. There's a a, a group of companies, Form Labs, a Sega, you know, Whitmix is is uh, uh, getting into it as well. That they're trying to make the whole process more more efficient. You know, I mean. There's a lot of those companies, I love. and I've been very impressed with certainly that the modern thinking that people are bringing to the table. And uh, you know, I think Form Labs is definitely one of the leaders in that. If you're looking to get into 3D printing, uh, I definitely would encourage you to to try out uh, Form Labs machines because I I had the call with with Phil and I said, Phil, I'd love to have a demo unit. We can unbox it, test it out. So, and uh, within two days it was shipped and I think it's arriving sometime today or tomorrow, you know? And I was totally blown away by the logistics, you know, by the, the phone support. And uh, so I'm super excited to unbox this and uh, play hey, around I with it. I actually took that one to FedEx myself. So that was special, <laughs> special handling charges that I should be putting on that. So Maria, you, you make sure we unbox it. There's, you know, it should be wrapped up nicely. So um, I, I took care of you guys. We're good. Uh, well, I appreciate it. And it goes to show what the, you know, the support side of Farm Labs is like. So thanks for your time, Phil. I know we're at the top of the hour and uh, really appreciate you giving us an insight to Farm Labs and to you. And, uh, you know, I hope that the rest of the week is as good as uh, this one. So it's a, hopefully it's a good start to uh, whatever the week unfolds for you. So take care and thanks very much. And for everyone, if you need CE credits or or uh, uh, if you needed to touch base with us regarding our, our scanner offer or our designs, please uh, send us a note. Or if you responded to our survey, someone's going to reach out to you. So. On that note, keep safe and see you next week. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.